All right, so back in the fall, I made a video on how we can our elk meat, or you could do deer meat. And since then, I have a lot of questions being asked about what do you do with the meat? How do you cook it? And so tonight, we decided that we would show you how we use it in one of the boys' very favorite meals, which is elk pot pie. All right, we're gonna head on out and get some of the ingredients that we need to make this pot pie. Now, most of these ingredients come from our own pantry. We're gonna get some of the canned meat that I had canned in the fall, some chicken broth and some potatoes. When we store our potatoes, we store them with the dirt still on. So we're gonna give these a good washing and then we'll get started. All right, so these potatoes, they are sprouting and they're, they, they look kind of bad, but they're still really good. We're just gonna go ahead and just give these a quick peeling here. You wanna do it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so while Finn is getting those potatoes peeled, I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping up the celery. You want me to get it and you start chopping? Cut them in half, cut it in half. We want little diced pieces, so like this. Yes? Is it easy to cut carrots with that? Pretty easy. Is it easier with this? Because if that one's pretty easy, can I have it? Do you want my knife? Little, you need little thin slices, they cook quicker. Watch your fingers, you're getting close. Uh, you pop wait, me with the thing. Why don't you pop it in your mouth and eat it? Five second roll. Time for batter? Dough. All right, so we have all those vegetables cut up and we put them in a pot and we're just gonna steam them until they're just start starting to get tender and then we'll take them and then we'll drain them and then we'll mix everything up. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and make the crust. Every time I make this pot pie, I use the same crust every time and it is a crust from the Pioneer Woman. She has the best crust ever and so we're gonna be using her recipe tonight. Go. So don't pack it in there. You want nice and fluffy flour. We are using Crisco tonight because I do not have any lard, but if you have lard, you can use that as well. We're gonna, so here's the three. Kay. You want to use that or do you want to use this? Uh, this. That one, okay. Add some salt. Wait, you put salt in the batter? Mm -hmm. It's gotta be packed in there good. Here, let me help you. Okay. So use the back and just smush. So you get all these air holes at the bottom, see that? Mm -hmm. You gotta smush it. Yes? That would've been bad, you know, it rolled off. This apron's small. Yes, it is, it shrunk. Is so it's it? a child's apron now. Perfect for you. All right, so now you're gonna scrape that into here. Don't slam it down, because it's gonna make a cloud of poof. All right, I wanna do it, Mom. Okay. Okay. All right, so once you get your Crisco in your flour, then you're going to use this little nifty tool and you are going to cut the Crisco into the flour until it kind of makes like little tiny pebbles. It takes a while. Like if you have a food processor, you could just throw all this into a food processor as well and have it done in like 15 seconds. But that's cheating, so we're going to do it like this. I just want to taste it. It's not going to taste like nothing but Crisco right now. I want you to taste nothing but like Crisco. It's not very good right now. 
right, you got to do it quick. You got to be faster than that. We'll be here all night. And if you didn't have one of these tools here, you could just use two forks or two knives and just continue chopping until you got it where it needed to be. So what, watch, see how I'm doing it? So instead of just pushing down, look, so you kind of do this motion. So you're actually cutting it into it. And I will link her recipe so you can go over to her website and grab this recipe off. This is fabulous for any kind of a pie or anything that you're making. All right, so there's your tiny little pebbles. So that's ready to go to the next step. Got an eggshell. Can I do it? Um, sure, I'll let you do the next one. So, a couple tablespoons of vinegar. Add one more tablespoon, Finn. You don't like my stirring abilities. Well, you just weren't mixing it up good enough. Okay, so pat it all in a nice little roll for us. Okay, now you're gonna split it in half. Okay. And then split that piece in half. Are you ready to cook or are you ready to eat? So we want this rolled into a rectangle. And remember, don't go back and forth because you'll rip it. So forward. So, forward. Yep. Okay, stop. They're starting to stick. So you got your, your stuff is all crooked already. There, so roll that way. Ready? And you make a mess if you don't <laughs> if you don't clean your flour up first. All right, so we just need to set this one to the side until we get all the filling put in. Uh, your nose. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna be using some canned meat. Now this has a layer of fat on it. Someone had told me they had threw this away because they thought this was bad. This is not bad. The dark colored meat at the top is just because it's out of the water and the white layer around here is just fat. But as long as your jar is sealed, then your meat is fine. I'm gonna pop these open. Good, it smells so good. This meat is already cooked. It cooks in the process when you can it. And so all you have to do is just open this up and add it to whatever you have cooked or whatever you're cooking. You don't have to cook the meat separately. It's already cooked. There's the jelly in there. Mm -hmm. So I use two store-bought things when I make this. One 
is cream of mushroom soup. You don't have to use it. You could just use chicken broth if you want. The other is froze peas, just because my kids really, really like them. All right, so go ahead and dump your soup in. Mmm. <laughs> well, um, We're gonna add chicken broth to it. So mix it up really good. So you gotta scoop down to the bottom. You like you gotta use some muscle, but don't fling it across the room. Yes, I'm like I'm gonna do that. Here, you want me to help? Yeah. So salt and pepper it. Right, now you need to put this on a cookie sheet when you do this because it's going, all this filling is going to boil over, which makes it really gooey and good, but it will make a mess in your oven. All right, so this is going to go in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. All right, so this is ready. We are gonna go ahead and dip some out and let it start cooling. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know my boys were very excited when they found out that I was making a video on this because they got their favorite meal. Now this is just one of the many things that we make with the canned meat. I mean, we're always making, you know, barbecue sandwiches or stews, chilies, fajitas, tacos. We like to mix it in the mornings with scrambled eggs to make breakfast burritos. And another way I like to use it is I, I take that canned meat and then I mix it with gravy and put it on top of mashed potatoes. And then all I have to do is open a can of green beans that we have here and then we have a, you know, a complete meal. And it's also really good to use as an appetizer. I take that meat and just drain it and then add mayo and hot sauce and we put that on top of a cracker. And then we top that with the cowboy candy that I had made. The canned meat is really great to have around. I love having it around and we use it a lot. You know, on these days, like especially right now when I'm out in the garden working every day, you know, I get out there and I get so busy and I don't lay anything out for dinner and all I have to do is just run out to our you know, our little pantry and then grab the meat and come in here and just throw together a really quick dinner that takes 15 or 20 minutes and we're good to go. We're actually getting really low on it right now, so we need a hunting season to get here so we can stock that back up. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell icon so you will be notified when the next video comes out. Also, don't forget to head on over to Instagram and follow me over there at Life Like Lizzie. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.